published in 1945 by um, Van Nivar Bush, who was the President Roosevelt science advisor. And Bush talked about what he called the Memex, which would be a box that would hold all of mankind's writings, and of course it would all fit in microfilm under your desk, <coughs> but you'd be able to make trails of the different significant objects, and side trails commonly come. And Doug was inspired by this, and I think I was inspired by it, but um, since it came out when I was eight, I'm not dead sure. <coughs> now, it has been taken as the beginning of hypertext. Well, I, I won't get to that one. Okay, so I should have had that up here. So Doug Engelbart was thinking about all these things, and in 1957 he had a vision of people being able to share work, share work on screens, share documents on screens, <coughs> and he saw this as, quote, raising collective IQ, meaning the ability of people to work together because the whole group is smarter. Whereas I've always believed that the IQ of the group was less than the IQ of any person. But <coughs> he, at Stanford, Stanford Research Institute, not part of Stanford University, he got grants from this guy, Bob Taylor. He got grants and built something called NLS, which stood for Online System. He invented, as everyone knows, the mouse. But that was only for one hand. In the other hand, using Doug's system, under the other hand, you had a five-finger keyboard. So Doug still works on his NLS system with a mouse in one hand and the five finger and typing with the other, uh, seamlessly, not having to move to the to a regular keyboard, regular QWERTY keyboard. Unfortunately, well, we'll see what happens. So I had my ideas in 1960, which were entirely different. What I called, I came up with the end word hypertext about here in 1963. But to me, it meant something very different from what is now called hypertext. It meant being able to buckle documents <laughs> side by side. It meant marginalia. It meant uh, publishing mechanisms. An entire suite. An entire suite. I'm, I believe you can have the paperless office. It's a commonplace joke that, oh no, you can't have the paperless office. Paperless office like the paperless toilet. Oh no. But <laughs> anyone who compares paper to an office to a toilet shouldn't be designing software. <laughs> the, uh, the point is, I believe you can replace, have a paperless office. But not if you imitate paper. Get it? <laughs> if you imitate paper, it's hopeless. <laughs> it's uh, totally inferior to the way things are now. <coughs> and, uh, oh my, okay. <coughs>